Good morning to all. I am Dr. Subhaya. Today I am going to discuss an interesting, common but not much known bony disorder in children. An X-ray in a 15-year-old boy taken to rule out an ankle fracture reveals a well-circumscribed lytic lesion in the cortex of the tibia away from where he is having any symptoms. So what's the likely diagnosis? The answer is fibrous cortical defect also referred to as non-ossifying fibroma. So the term fibrous cortical defect was coined to describe the smaller variety of non-ossifying fibroma for a large lesion which is enough to encroach on the medullary canal the term non-ossifying fibroma is used but no histologic difference exists between these two lesions. The etiology remains obscure and it is a proliferation of benign fibrous tissue possibly developing as a result of periosteal injury or secondary to abnormalities at the epiphyseal plate. And it constitutes 5 percentage of benign tumors of the bone. The true incidence is more likely to be more than 30 percentage because it is an asymptomatic in most patients and most lesions are never identified. The average duration is in the range of 29 to 52 months after which it resolves spontaneously and it may present during childhood also but the lesions tend to disappear in adolescence. And it is the most frequent bony lesion in children occurring in as much as 30 to 40 percentage and the commonest age group affected is in adolescence. And the clinical features it is usually asymptomatic, pain is rare and if it present it indicates associated with a fracture and is typically localized to long bones such as femur and tibia. And it is an incidental finding on radiograph. It is always benign and it may result in pathologic fracture though this is a rare first presentation. So this is the classic picture of an fibrous cortical defect. You can see an eccentric radial loosened lesion located within the metaphyseal cortex of the upper end of the tibia. The margins are sharply demarcated and the appearance is often septated. And regarding the management, so no further action is necessary unless a pathological fracture has occurred or risk of fracture is high because it is mostly a benign lesion. And in the pediatric population, casting usually is the most appropriate treatment after pathological fracture. In unstable fractures or in adolescence, curettage with or without grafting and internal fixation are appropriate. When it occurs in a near epiphysis, surgery should be avoided if possible. So with time, the focal cortical defect will migrate away from the physis and the risk of damage to the growth plate will be minimized. Long term monitoring. So after first diagnosis, the typical lesions do not require more than one follow up examination and radiograph is taken after 6 to 12 weeks interval. Large lesions must be followed with the plain films every 4 to 6 months to assess progression so the lesions may increase in size. And a lesion that measures more than 50 percentage of the transverse diameter of the bone is susceptible to pathologic fracture. The patients must be instructed to avoid excessive activities in order to prevent acute fractures. Contact sports also must be avoided. The natural history of non-ossifying fibroma is one of involution and ossification as puberty is reached. So this usually proceeds from the diaphyseal end to the metaphyseal end of the lesion. So prognosis, the rarity of fibrous cortical defect in adults confirms that these lesions regress with time. So summary, so non-ossifying fibroma is the most common benign tumor in childhood and it typically resolves spontaneously. Very large lesions can rarely weaken the bone enough to pose a fracture risk and a small percentage of these lesions present with pathological fracture. Thank you.